Um, so, hey everybody. Uh, I know that I threatened to do this video a long time ago and it took me a while to get around to it, but I apologize for that. Here we are. Uh, this is the photo gear that I used at Seabase. Hopefully you've seen my Seabase uh, video. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, everything that I used to make that video uh, is here in this little bag. Uh, this is the Lowell Pro bag. Um, it's only about $16. I've seen it as low as $16. I paid more than that, but I just bought it at the wrong time. But you know, always uh, shop, get your best deal, uh, shop around. It's the Viewpoint CS80 uh, Lowell Pro bag. Uh, so this worked out great. I'm glad I had it. I will definitely take this when I go back. Uh, and so, and this and uh, a selfie stick, or uh, this happens to be the ghost scope. Um, these are the only two items that I took on board for photography. I did have an iPhone, but I don't like using that for video. Um, I don't have a lot of memory in it. It's not, it's not a newer iPhone, so I just didn't even use it. And that was, I was, there's no real way to attach it. Um, I was afraid I'm going to drop it overboard or something. Um, so, anyways, this is what I took. Uh, I want to talk to you about the Go Scope first. Uh, then we'll get into the bag. Uh, a little bit more into the contents of what's in the bag. So, first of all, uh, this is uh, one of the most important pieces of gear that I took. I didn't realize it at the time, but uh, when I was down there, this is very important. You want to have uh, a, a good selfie stick uh, for two reasons. On board the boat, scouts are going to be doing things that are funny. Uh, there are going to be a lot of antics that you want to catch uh, and put together a good video for them. Um, in the boat, there's a lot of cabling, a lot of rigging, a lot of stuff in the cockpit. It's hard. You can't get across the boat uh, to get close to them to get that uh, a good close-up shot. And all these GoPros, all these action cameras have very wide angle lenses. So if you're on one side of the boat and something's going on on the other side of the boat, you're too far away. So it's great to be able to extend this and just go over somebody's shoulder. You can see the fish they're catching or, what, you know, whatever they're doing, if they're jumping in, you know, just get closer to the action. Uh, but the most important uh, reason for this is underwater. Um, because the fish and all the marine life, they don't, they're not afraid of you, but they're not gonna let you get close. So there's a, there's, each fish, I noticed, has a, a comfort zone, and uh, almost none of them will let you within arm's length. Uh, so if there's a human in the body with a camera in his hand, uh, they're not going to let you get a close-up, but extend this out. They're not afraid of the camera. I could extend this out and the fish swim right up to it. As a matter of fact, uh, the mangrove snapper were kind of curious. They saw it and swam up to it to, and got to get a good better look at it. Um, and so the clip with the mangrove snapper, um, we weren't even in the water for that clip because the, if you're swimming in the water or in the mangroves, it's... Uh, it, you stir up a lot of sediment, so it kind of ruins your shot. So we actually were in a kayak, and we just put this under the water, and this fish swam up to it and got some got some neat shots there. Um, there's another shot in my video where it looks like I'm swimming through the coral with the fish, but I'm seven feet away. I'm up at the surface, breathing through my snorkel, just paddling along, uh, and the length of my arm plus the selfie stick. Uh, and the fish were unafraid. They knew I was up there, but they thought I was at a safe distance. So the camera's just moving through the coral uh, right with the fish. And they're, they'll, they're gonna jump out of the way before it touches them, but you're gonna get pretty close to them. So, very important to get a good one. This, like I said, I, this is the Go Scope. This was about $20 and well worth the price. It's, uh, it has the GoPro locking mounts on it, which is very important uh, for, for this because you don't want to take a chance on losing a camera. Don't even think about taking one of these things down there with you because there's a lot of ways to lose it. Uh, first of all, the strap's not very secure. Uh, it only screws on. There's no way to lock it on if that camera comes with unscrewed. Uh, while you're in the water, it's, it's gone. Um, so. Uh, and if it's the water's deep enough, nobody can snorkel that deep to get it. it you won't be able to retrieve it unless somebody has some air tanks. Um, so, but who's got time for all that? 
This was $20. Um, well worth it. It has a good strap that you can lock. Uh, you can get your hand in there, cinch it up. Uh, so you got to be able to do that because out there in that water, there's some strong currents. You can get smacked with a big wave. Your mask could fill up with water. And what at that time, you need to drop what's in your hands, fix your mask, and be able to forget about holding the camera. If you're if you're free holding the camera, uh, I would say don't even get in the water. Um, because you need to be able to fix your mask without thinking about anything else. So you drop it, fix your mask. You don't want to drop your camera, so you better have a good strap on it, a good strap that can cinch up. So there's no worry. You drop it, fix your mask, and then go back to what you were doing. Uh, but the ghost scope was great. Uh, it's got a good grip on it. Um, and even with it extended out, you know, what I did was I started and stopped the GoPro just by pushing the buttons. I know you can get uh, the remote controls, but I would press it. Uh, I had the beep turned on, so after three beeps, I know I'm recording. Uh, and I press it again. I don't have to look at it. I hear it. You can hear the beeps underwater. Um, and I heard seven beeps. I know I'm not recording. And so I'm swimming along. I see something interesting. Just press it. Uh, get it down there and you get pre you can see the preview from uh, that distance too because you get an idea of what's in the, in the shot. I was following a turtle, a sea turtle, and uh, he wouldn't let me get very close. Uh, so I had my arm extended out as far as I could. Uh, he, there, was a say, there was a distance he felt comfortable. He wouldn't let me get any closer. He controlled the distance. Uh, and I had the little monitor on at that point because it was kind of hard to see where he's at in the frame. Um, but followed him for a little while till he got tired and then we followed him and he went up and got a gulp of air and then took off. There was no chance of me keeping up with it. So anyways, that's the stick I used. It's, uh, you definitely want to have uh, a good stick. I'm not uh, you know, trying to sell anybody on this particular one. I did like this. As a matter of fact, I bought another one. Um, oh, another thing too, you can have two cameras on this, so if a scout wanted, or another adult wanted you uh, to put their camera on this, you could actually be running with two cameras. Um, or shoot one at 4K uh, and the other one at 1080. Um, so, uh, it opens up some options for you. But yeah, get a good stick with a secure wrist strap uh, and a locking head. Uh, and you want about at least 40 inches in length, so check that out. The bag, the Owl Pro Viewpoint CS80. This worked out well. I'm glad I got it. I paid too much money for it. I don't remember what I paid, but I remember seeing it after afterwards, and uh, it was only like $16. So uh, you know, that's how it goes. Um, if you can wait, and shop around, you usually find a better deal. Uh, but it's a good bag. It held everything I needed. Uh, and all these items uh, have to fit in that two-foot duffel bag, plus all your personal items, your clothing and everything. So no problem there. This all fit in my duffel bag. Uh, so uh, I was quite pleased with this. Now this bag sat up in the cockpit with us most of the time during the day because I didn't want to go down into the cabin to get this or get that or get a charger cable or whatever. So it basically sat up on the cockpit. I found a little spot. The captain was okay with it being up there. Um, so I just basically left it up there. And that became kind of our little camera uh, station. Uh, the other adult leader on the boat had his uh, GoPros and his equipment out there. Uh, so it's easy just to flip this open. It was under the canopy, so it's not getting hot in the sun. And if it rained, it didn't get wet. Uh, not that that would matter, uh, but um, uh, let me show you what's inside the bag. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at what's inside the bag. There's a ranger band. Uh, I didn't take that to sea base, but uh, it's probably a good idea to have a couple of those there. So I'm going to leave that right there. I use this bag for camping too, backpacking. Uh, you know, I might lighten it up or put a couple, put uh, different stuff in there depending on what I'm uh, what I'm going to be doing or shooting. So um, it's it's coming really handy. But here's how I had it set up for sea base. Um, so when you first open it up, it has a pocket here at the beginning. 
uh, the first page here where you can put SD cards and a couple of mini SD cards. Uh, so that's great to have a couple of spare cards there. Um, then there's a zip pocket that, um, you know, that zipper being on the bottom, things tend to want to slide out. So uh, that's, you might want to be mindful of that. Uh, zip it up when you're, when you're done. But uh, that's where I kept my lens cleaning cloths. And it's a little bit tricky. At Seabase, everything is going to be covered in sunscreen five minutes after the boat leaves the dock. So uh, I, I didn't take enough of these. I think I took three. I would probably, on my next trip to Seabase, I'm going to take about a dozen. And I'm going to uh, keep them uh, separated. Uh, and I will uh, number the, si the corners uh, on one side, one, two, three, four. And on the other side, A, B, C, and D. That way I can know what part of it's been used um, and, uh, and what part hasn't been used. And I'll, uh, it's good to keep it in a Ziploc bag and try to use it without touching it because your hands are going to have that stuff all over them. So, you know, if you can, uh, you know, clean something up, wipe it without actually touching the, the cloth, uh, that'll make it last a little bit longer. Uh, but yeah, I needed a lot of those at Seabase. Um, so... And uh, I didn't keep them in a Ziploc bag. I had Ziploc bags, uh, but it never occurred to me to put it in the Ziploc bag while I was there. That's something I, that was an afterthought. Uh, but uh, what else is in the pocket is the, uh, this is the um, polarization filter. So when you're on board the boat and you're not diving, this fits right over the lens and uh, I use that quite a bit. It gives you some nice blue skies and real white clouds and, and you can look down in the water too and you see it, it takes that glare off the surface. So uh, look for that uh, if you're using a GoPro. That was, that was very helpful having that and I really like it and I've used it a lot since. Um, I've got some uh, windscreens for the GoPro here. That actually I didn't take to Seabase. Uh, this, that's something I added since then. Um, just cut down on wind noise and I probably need it right now. There's a breeze out here. I hope it's not interfering too much. Um, I've got some scrims. I've got a blue scrim and an amber scrim. And these go with uh, this light. And I took this light uh, with me. It's a little LED light. And I used it uh, for some nighttime shooting. Uh, the scouts really didn't like it. Every time I turned it on, they're like, oh, what is that? Get out of here. So, um, I will take it next time, but I'm, I'm not, I don't anticipate using it unless there's something specific that I need to get uh, some, some shots of in the evening. Um, but, uh, yeah. Next thing in here, some uh, pre-moistened lens cloths. Because um, it's a good... Um, good thing to give your lenses a good cleaning, you know, maybe midway through the trip or something. Um, but that's that's what's in that pocket. And again, always zip it up so the stuff don't come flying out. Um, so the top of this thing, I've got a microphone uh, that you, that I can use with this uh, audio recorder, um, or you can use the audio recorder. It works without a mic. It's got a built-in mic. Uh, and headphones. So uh, I I took this to sea base, and I take it on a lot of my camping outings because I like to record the nighttime sounds and the sounds, uh, you know, the bugs and the birds and and all those things. And um, there's not really a lot of sound to capture out on the boat because you don't hear waves or anything. Maybe there's the water lapping at the hole of the boat. So I didn't use that very much. Uh, but we'd still probably leave it in there because it doesn't take up a lot of space and it doesn't weigh a lot. Um, beside that uh, is camera charging cords, GoPro charging cords, uh, micro USB. This I used, uh, I took along so that I could offload, if I did use my uh, iPhone to record anything, I could offload it and not leave it on the, cam the phone because I just knew I was going to drop my phone in the ocean. Uh, I never did, but uh, I, was, I was trying to be prepared for that. Uh, my iPhone doesn't have a lot of memory either. It's an older phone. Uh, so I thought if I could just offload the, the stuff and 
then I'd be uh, I could continue using it but really didn't use the iPhone because I had the uh, the GoPro cameras and basically most of the footage was shot with my GoPro 7 on and I left it on the go stick pretty much the entire time because on the on board the boat I used it uh, to get closer to stuff you know I mentioned that earlier and then in the water so I hardly ever took it off of that uh, and that um, the polarization filter fits right over the the, the top of this um, so just left that like that um, I also had uh, two sessions with me now these are old sessions they don't have any image stabilization or anything so they they just needed to be mounted somewhere and I mentioned earlier that tripods don't work on the boat. I use these uh, small rigs on board. So these these things will clamp. There's a there's a million places on the boat that you can clamp these, and and it articulates uh, into any position. So you can get your camera perfect, uh, no matter where it's clamped, uh, whether it's on the bimini top or on the rail, the bow rail. There's lots of lots of lots of opportunities. And when when it's when it's relaxed, it makes it easier to pack up smaller. Um, so basically, you put your camera housing on it, uh, get it mounted somewhere, uh, hopefully out of the way. And I told the scouts and everybody on the boat, hey, if you see something interesting, go ahead and uh, hit the record button and let's capture it. Um, so the scouts really, you know, they're busy having fun. They're not, they're not thinking about that kind of stuff, but the adults do. And the captain did. He was, um, I, I saw him, uh, he would see something going on that might need to be recorded and he'd reach over and, and start, uh, press the button and get it going. He was a photographer too. So really enjoyed spending time out there with the captain. Uh, great fellow, uh, really good photographer. So... Uh, he showed me some of his underwater stuff. It's pretty incredible. So um, if uh, if your captain is Captain Buddha, you're very fortunate uh, went out at sea base. So, uh, but yeah, I had two sessions mounted on the rails and around the boat. Um, I have uh, a little charging, a dual charger. So I uh, basically had three batteries for the GoPro 7, two spares, uh, and whichever one is in the camera. Never felt like I needed more batteries than that. Um, and this has to fit in a certain way for it all to fit. Um, I also have this extra GoPro mount. Never needed it, but you know, some things you just, you just don't want to be without. Uh, so the small rigs relaxed will fit, will fit right in there. So here, um, this is a solar charger. The solar panel is too small, so don't even think you're going to be using that to charge this thing up. Uh, what you'll need to do is the boat has a 12 volt system and there's going to be some USB chargers on board the boat. Work it out with the captain where you can charge and, it, and when you can charge. So what I did was I just charged this up at night um, and then used it throughout the day to recharge my cameras because I could recharge the camera and my phone. I have all the cables here. Um, so I do all my equipment charging during the day and just get this thing topped off every night uh, while, we're, while we're sleeping. So um, I, cut, I left this out in the sun all day and it barely charged it at all. So that's just not enough of a solar collector to charge these batteries. But it's a good battery pack. Um, it, it was great for charging. Underneath that in this pack is a small pair of Tasco binoculars. Um, so they're decent binoculars. Uh, especially for their size um, you know the captain's going to have a pair of binoculars in the cockpit but those are a very ex expensive pair of binoculars um, it's you just don't need all the scouts trying to use that if they want to see something take an inexpensive the troops somebody in the troops should bring uh, a pair of binoculars for the scouts to use and and leave the captain's binoculars uh, where they're at um, like I said, you don't want anything to happen to those. They're, they're probably very expensive binoculars. Um, so that's basically it. I can't, I don't think there's anything else uh, in here. So if there was something I, I would, that I didn't take, that I would like to take would be the, uh, a drone. I, I didn't take a drone. I'd love to have one out there. You're only going to have a few opportunities to fly it. 
you know, in the evening, but you could get some beautiful sunset shots uh, with the sailboat in it. Um, but there's a lot of rigging, it's going to be tricky landing it. Um, and the captain may not even allow a drone uh, to be on board, so ask uh, before you get on the boat. And if not, I'm going to take mine on my next trip uh, next summer, 2021. And uh, I'm going to take it down there, and if the captain's okay with it, I'll bring it on board. Uh, and, and if not, then I will leave it in the locker at sea base, uh, safe and secure, until we get back. So, so that's basically it. I think I covered it all. Um, it's a good little, good little pack. Um, and so I hope you get an opportunity to go to sea base. And if you do, I'm not saying you need to have all this stuff. Uh, I just wanted to do this video to show you what I had and what I liked and what I what I really didn't uh, think I needed. Uh, main thing is the go stick and the clamps. Uh, don't take a tripod; you won't be able to use it anywhere, and it won't it won't work for you. So those clamps are great, um, and and plenty of charging. So, all right. Well, thanks for watching. Hope you found this uh, helpful. Yeah, if you did, leave a comment. Let me know. See you later.